everybody, welcome to this video. Today we will be talking about self-joins. The way a self-join works is you take a table and you are essentially joining it with itself. And that's what kind of makes self-joins confusing and a lot of people can't find practical purposes for them. I'm going to be giving you... I dropped my marker. I just got white marker. Oh. Self-joins are complicated and a lot of people can't find practical purposes for them. In this video, I'll be giving you at least one good reason for them, so hopefully this video is helpful. So when you have a self-join, think of basically duplicating the table you have and making an exact copy and then joining those two tables together. That's a good way you can think about it. So for this example, I'm going to be using a user account system on a website. And you know how some websites have like a referral option? Basically, if you refer somebody, you get like 20% of their money and, or their points or 10% of their money, so forth. That's like referral marketing. And when you do that, you are assigned a person who referred you, right? And it can become a chain, like this person referred this person, referred this person, referred this person. So within a user table, you might have a user ID, and then on top of that, you're going to have, you know, email, first name, last name, and the person who referred you. I am putting the person who referred you within a column known as referred by, and this is actually a foreign key to the same table. So within here, you are going to have numbers such as 12, which is going to point back to the user ID of 12. So for example, the user ID 11 might be a person who was referred by the user with the user ID of 12. Now the only way that you can make this really work for a join is if you use a self-join. Basically, what we want to do is we want to replace referred by with the ID. We want to use a join to replace this number with that user's email, which I also forgot to put in here, so, you know, just throw an email in there. <laughs> so we'll take this, and then our outputted result will look something like this. And this is the table that we're going to have, and then we're going to insert data into that table. So we might have a user, such as Caleb Curry, and his email is going to be swag at yolo.com. And then it's referred by that that we're going to replace that number with a user's email, such as uh, hotsauce at uh, um, yahoo.org. <laughs> so that's just an example of what we can do with this self-join. Now in order for this to work, we have to tell the database that we're going to be using the same table basically two different tables and that can kind of be confusing and in order for that to work you have to use what's known as an alias I talked about those in the last video so be sure to check those on out so to begin we just kind of think of a name of what we could call each table we could have the first table which would also be the user table and then the second table which would be another uh, copy of the user table now we're not actually like copying the data this is just for illustration point. It's going to use that data, that same table to withdraw the data from. And we could say this one is um, V1 and V2, for example. Those are our aliases. And in order to define those, we put as after our data, after our table, and put V1. So we could say user as V1 and then join user as V2. This is something kind of like what you would do. So now we have a user as V1 and then we're joining user as v2 and it kind of gets the idea that oh this person wants to use the same table for this situation let's try to figure this out let's begin we are going to put this within a select statement and i'm going to give you some specific syntax just so this can kind of make sense so we have a, a select statement then right after the select statement we always put the columns we want to take our data from now this can get kind of confusing though because we have two basic two different tables that we're going to be taking data from. So we have to think which table we want to take which columns from. The way we had it set up before is we have this table and this table. This was V1 and this was V2. Well, let's kind of, in our imaginary brains, which we don't have, uh, we're going to say this table is for the user and this table is for the referrals. So we're going to take from this table, we'll take the uh, the, the user ID maybe, or um, the first name, 
the last name, and the email. And then from this table, we are going to take the email of the person who referred you. So we'll take the uh, referred by person's email. So the way this will work is we're going to have the user ID, such as 7, and Caleb Curry, and then their email, and then it'll have an ID of 7 or, some, or um, 8 for the referred by, and then that's going to go to the second table to get that person's email. You got to keep this in mind and you have to figure out what you're going to name your tables before you start the select. Because now that we are going to say the columns, we have to qualify those columns by putting a dot before them and saying what table they're from. And we can just use the alias name that we've had or made up. So we could say select v1 period or dot and we could say first name, comma, and then we could say v1 dot last name, comma, v1 dot email, comma. Finally, we are going to take v2 and we're going to take that person's email, or you can do their first name or last name, whatever you want to put in that referred by thing. If you wanted to say their first name, you can say v2.firstname. If you want it to be their last name, it could be v2.lastname. Or if you want a combination of both, you can use a concatenation function or something. So we're just going to use the email. So we're going to take the v2.email. Now that we know what columns and what tables that we want to take the data from, we actually have to put the from statement still and say something like from and then put the table we are taking this data from. This is where we are going to define our alias. So we could say from user as v1. That is going to basically tell the database that the user table is known as v1. Now we can do a join. Join, this is going to default to an inner join if you just use join like that. We could say join user as v2. That is going to basically tell them that user is also going to be known as v2, but it's going to be considered a different table in this situation. Then you're going to do the on, which is going to say where we are going to join these things. Now this is where it can get really confusing because there's so many possibilities that you can put right here. For this situation, we are going to take v1 and we're going to take the referred by column and that is going to be the same as v2 user id column so if you can think about this imagine literally two tables with the same exact data here's v1 here's v2 and we have a user id and then within here we also have a referred to by or referred by i guess that's going to reference the user id of the the v2 table so that means we need to basically make this connection and say that if there is a 6 over here in the referred by table it needs to be the same as the user ID over here that has 6. If you need more practical data under, to understand this imagine we have this guy over here and his name's Samuel and we have this guy over here and his name is uh... yeah that's his name uh, <laughs> and I'll refer Samuel. That means I'll is going to have the user ID of 6 within this user row of the user ID of let's say 12. So Samuel has the ID of 12 and he was referred by the person with the user ID of 6 which is I'll and then this other table which is also the same user table <laughs> it's going to refer to the person with the ID of 6 which is this guy. Hopefully that makes sense. But in reality, you're not going to have two exact copies of the data. It's smart enough to understand that these are all one table. So it's basically going to take that referred by and then go back to the user column and join that into what would look like taking two tables and putting them together. That's why it can get kind of confusing. But when you take this query as it is and you put it in your database, you will get something that looks like a normal joined table. It'll be one really big table and it will have the columns that we selected. 
v1.fn. On top of this, we're also going to have the v1 last name and the v1 email and the v2 email. Then if we were to put example data into this, it would look something like Caleb, Curry, an email, and then the v2 email would be like another guy's email, so such as swa.com. That's what it would look like, and it would just give you all of the rows for that. So yeah, you can mess around, do all kinds of cool joins and all kinds of stuff. But there's one more thing that I want to tell you, and that has to do with aliases. Well, you know, this might not be too pretty how you have it right now, and it might be confusing having uh, an email and then right beside it another email. Like, what, is the, what do those mean? Well, you might want to say that one column is the user and another is the person who referred them. So you can use an alias for that too. So for that you also use as, but instead of putting in the from, you're just going to put it right after the column that you want to change. So you can put here, 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 and here. So if I wanted the, the table two email, or the person who referred, you could make it say like um, v2 dot email as, referred by. And this you're going to want to put in quotes to say you want that string as the title for that column. And then when you get that new table, that join, instead of saying email, it's going to say referred by. And then it'll list the data. Yo, what's up my homie homies? This video, or this section of the video I guess, we'll just be discussing this in a little more depth by showing this real example that I explained on the board. So you can see I have a user table. And within my user table, you know, I got user ID, pass, email, for, uh, first name, last name, and a referred by. And this referred by is a foreign key referencing the user ID. It's kind of interesting how that works. So you can see here, it was this guy, uh, llamaswag at yolo.com, was referred by two, which in this case would be hi mom at lololololol.com, which he basically referred everybody, that's why he has a zero here. And if you scroll down, we also have some people who are referred by one. Basically, what we want to do is we want to replace this referred by with the person's email. And to do that, we can use a self-join. And who knows, there might be a way easier way to do this. So if there is, just be sure to let me know. All right, so here's a query that would work to do that. So let me just uh, refresh this. And here's what it's going to do. It's going to select the first name, last name, email of the person who was referred. And it's also going to take the email of the referral person, the person who referred the other person. The person <laughs> within this referred by column. Okay, so you can see here we got the first name, last name, email. That's one thing, and then the referred by email. So how does this work? We can take the columns, and we also replaced the email of the referred by and put referred by. That's why it shows up right here, which is what we want. That's good. Then we say what table, we're going to take the user table and call it v1, which you can basically name it whatever, as long as you update uh, right here, then it'll still work. That's just a name I made up, I couldn't think of something cool, but basically uh, version 1, you know. <laughs> this inner join is we're taking our other version of the table, and uh, just so you know, this inner is optional, so you can take that away and it's going to work exactly the same way. Then we're going to say how it's related, so basically this referred by email uh, that needs to have an ID in that table that refers to a person. So the referred by is going to have an ID, and that needs to match a user ID. So within the first table, let's go back to the user table. This two, for example, that needs to reference an actual person. It needs to be actual data within that second version of the user table. And it's going to go to the second version of the user table, find that person with the uh, ID of two, and it's going to take that email and display it right here. So hopefully that makes sense, guys. And uh, of course you can mess this, mess up uh, this query. You can just mess around with it and put your own stuff in it to get your own results. And you can even change this uh, statement right here to get even more crazy results. So yeah, guys, thanks for watching. Peace on Earth. And catch you in the next video. And subscribe. As well as v1.lastname and v. <laughs> ah! It's a one, not an L, moron!
for the aliases of the table, we're going to tell MySQL, oh, crap nuggets. I mean, <laughs> it's not MySQL's database. Design.